have the coronavirus, but you are taking some sensible precautions right now. Yes. I miss you so much. I, I just, I want to be there in, in the midst of the great teamwork you guys are doing. This self-isolation is very isolating. I, I want to be at work putting hand sanitizer on our Doppler and adding to the program here. But I, I want to tell you, I'm just so thankful that our company is really conscious of um, its employees and wants us to be safe and I'm following their direction. I do want to pass along tips. The part of this discussion will be learn from my mistakes. So we have a 24 hour grocery store near us and I thought I know no one else will think of this. I'll go to the grocery store in the middle of the night and all my problems will be over. So the rumor was that this grocery store restocked by four o'clock in the morning. So at 10 after four, I show up at the grocery store and the restocking is gone and there are lines out the door. So not only did I not get the supplies I needed, I couldn't do my social distancing at four o'clock in the morning. All that to say, don't think you're smarter than the rest of the population. Go to the grocery store in the middle of the night doesn't work. So I talked to the manager of the store and I said, so how could your supplies be gone so quickly? And he said, because they're only sending a limited supply from our warehouse. They're only sending 50 percent of our normal supply. Mm -hmm. And then above that, the regional distributors are only sending 50 percent of their normal supply. They're hoarding, too. So hoarding is going on from the top to the bottom of the food chain. And so all that to say, don't go to the grocery store in the middle of the night. It won't matter. Yet people <laughs> in the store still want to hoard because it's empowering to hoard, even if they're only hoarding things they don't need. There was a woman with 10 boxes of Melba toast. And I said, <laughs> bless your heart. Maybe with a couple of quarts of grape jelly, it would be awesome. And you, and you look down these aisles and it's eerie. They're empty. It's empty, empty, empty condiments, empty, empty, empty gluten-free pie shells, empty, empty, empty leek soup. So the grocery stores are getting lots of things that they don't care about off their shelves, but you won't get the supplies you need at four o'clock in the morning. But I'm fine. I have two well, curry machines yeah. here. We're My so daughter glad to hear your college. Yeah. Sorry, Fritz. I'm going to so stay up to until the pandemic is over. <laughs> Well, we know you, we, we got you here at home, but how are other celebrities, how are they entertaining from their living rooms as well? Well, I think uh, Jimmy Fallon's example is a great example. I mean, 50% of the entertainment medium is the audience and the audience response. So there's so much missing. And um, I, I know that a lot of my comedian friends are posting short, little amusing videos online that people can look at when they when they need a smile. I'll, I'll tell you, though, an industry, if you can call it an industry that's really hurting, is the nonprofit industry, because over the last week, I've had 15 nonprofit events canceled. And some of these are small. Some of these canceled their main fundraiser of the year. So this is having a really interesting sort of peripheral economic effect on very small groups that desperately need the money from this one event. So that's a very sad situation as well. Yeah, that really is challenging, Fritz. Well, we wish you the best and we look forward to checking in with you daily if we can, so stay safe. He's I on miss the clock. you guys a lot. You're be. doing a spectacular <laughs> job. <laughs> All right. Fritz, good seeing you, my man. Thank you. Taking a live look.